Okay, welcome to our next lecture on linear motion, and this is getting into some of the real math that's involved in physics. So in order to do math and physics, uh, we have to use a number of different equations or formulas, things like that, that'll help us sort of guide ourselves through this. Um, so I'm going to introduce to you three linear motion formulas, also known as kinematic equations, which is a fancy version of it. The first equation looks like this says that the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times the amount of time. Now if you actually really look at this equation, um, you might recognize that it's simply a rearranging of the definition of an acceleration, where acceleration is a change in velocity over time. The second equation, sometimes called the displacement equation, because it is solving for displacement says that displacement is initial velocity times time plus one-half acceleration times time squared. Now in that equation, at the very end, only the time value is squared, not that entire thing. Note, if I have a constant velocity, which we all know now gives you an acceleration of zero, that displacement equation gets rid of half of that formula. And we have this relationship that displacement is your initial velocity, which is also your constant velocity, times time. You may know that from math as distance equals rate times time. The last equation, which says that the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus 2 times the acceleration times the displacement. Um, I've given this kind of my own name over the years. I call it the time unknown equation. And the reason I call that it that is because it's of the three equations, it's the only one that doesn't have time in it. Um, so I always say that if you aren't given time and you're not looking for time, this is sort of always going to be your best friend. So let's look at a couple of examples, example problems, and how we can use this. First problem says a car starts from rest and accelerates at 0 0.4 meters per second squared for 20 seconds. Part A, determine the velocity of the car at the end of 20 seconds. Part B, determine the displacement of the car at the end of 20 seconds. Now. The best way to approach a physics problem is to first write down what you're given in terms of the number and in terms of units. So you need to look for things like starting, stopping, things like that, constant. This says that the car starts from rest. So that's given me something, that my initial velocity is zero. So I want to write that out in terms of initial velocity, VO, and 0 meters per second. It then accelerates at 0.4 meters per second squared. Well, that's a direct number. So now I know my acceleration, A, is 0 0.4 meters per second squared for 20 seconds. Well, seconds is the unit of time, 20 seconds. So I've written down the things that I'm given. Now, I want to write down the symbol or term of whatever it is I'm looking for. Determine the velocity of the car at the end of 20 seconds. So I want a velocity at the end. Well, that would be a final velocity. Now, it's a matter of looking at these three givens and what I'm looking for and matching it up with the appropriate kinematic equation. Well, if I look at these three motion equations, clearly that first equation has final velocity, initial velocity, acceleration, and time. So that's the one I want to use. So I want to write out the equation. It's always important to write out your equation. And now that I've written the equation, I know exactly where I need to write my numbers. Final velocity, that's what I'm looking for. The initial velocity was 0, the acceleration was 0 0.4, and the time of 20, giving me a final velocity of 8 meters per second. See, it all works out nice and neat. Part B says to find the displacement. Well, the symbol for displacement is the letter x. And now, again, I can look at my equations and decide what to use. 
Now again, I can look at my equations and decide what to use. Now notice there are two equations that have the letter x in it. The second equation, the displacement one, and the third one, the time unknown equation. Both will give you the same answer if you do over your math correctly. But in this case, I probably want to go with the second equation. And one of the reasons I want to go with that is the third one has final velocity in it, something I just calculated. If possible, I always want to try to rely on numbers that I'm given, not necessarily numbers that I've calculated. Okay, so let's write out our equation. Displacement, x, equals initial velocity times time, plus one-half acceleration times time squared. X is what I'm searching for. The initial velocity is zero. The time was 20 seconds. The acceleration is 0 0.4. And again, the time is 20 seconds squared. Now at the end, only that 20 seconds is squared. So now when I multiply everything out, well, that first part gives me zero. This gives me 1 half 0.4 times 400, 20 squared. And that gives me 80 meters in displacement. And that's how far the car traveled in that 20 seconds. Not too tough, right? Ah, let's look at a different example. In this one, a car is traveling at 20 meters per second, brakes, and comes to a stop over a distance of 100 meters. Determine the acceleration of the car and determine the time it takes the car to stop. Once again, let's look at our givens. Car is traveling at 20 meters per second. So at the beginning of the problem, the car is already in motion, meaning the initial velocity for this one is 20, because the car is in motion. Then it breaks and comes to a stop. Then it breaks and comes to a stop. Now, coming to a stop at the end would mean that your final velocity is zero over a distance of 100 meters. Well, distance, or in other words, your actual displacement is 100 meters from the moment the brakes were hit until the car comes to a stop. Part A says, to determine my acceleration. Well, if I look at the givens here, and now I'm going to look at my equations, well, in those givens, time was not a given factor, nor was it asked for. So right away, I want to go to that time unknown equation. So that equation says final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus 2ax. Now let's put in our values. Well, final velocity we know is 0. The initial is 20. 2. A is what we're looking for. And the displacement is 100. Now, 0 squared, of course, is 0. 20 squared is 400. And then, algebraically, I have 2 times 100, which is 200, all times a. Now, I want to solve for a, so my next algebra move is to subtract 400 from both sides, giving me negative 400 on this side, and 200a on that side. I want to divide through both sides by 200 to get rid of the 200 on that side. And I get an acceleration of negative 2 meters per second squared. Now, why negative? Well, because the car was traveling with a positive velocity, and it needed to slow down. And the only way to slow a positive velocity is with a negative acceleration. So notice that the math kind of matches what's going on in the problem. Part B. Determine the time. Now, again, I have two equations that have time in it. The displacement equation, the second equation, and the first equation. Whenever I can use that first equation, that's usually what I want to go for, because it doesn't have square terms or things like that. It's always sort of the easier one to go with. So that's the one I'm going to use. Final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. The final velocity was 0. The initial was 20. 
my acceleration was negative 2. Now, again, if I look at the math, I've got to subtract 20 from both sides. And then I'm going to divide through by negative 2. Now, this is one of those important things where the math can't lie to you. You can't ever get negative time. And if you ever do get negative time, that means you did something wrong. Probably something with your vectors. But here, I come out to a positive 10 seconds. So that's how much time it took from the moment the brakes were touched until the car came to a complete stop over that 100 meters. Okay? Let's look at one last example. A train starts from rest and accelerates to 40 meters per second in 60 seconds. A. Determine the acceleration of the train. B. Determine the total displacement of the train over that 60 seconds. And C. If the train now travels at a constant velocity of 20 seconds, determine its displacement during this 20 seconds. So for the first part, starts from rest, has an initial velocity of 0, and accelerates to 40 meters per second. Now that's not an acceleration, that's a final velocity, because the units are in meters per second in a time of 60 seconds. Now clearly it can't be an acceleration because part A asks you to solve for an acceleration. My first kinematic equation, final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time, will work best here. Final velocity is 40, initial is 0 time of 60 seconds gives an acceleration of 0 0.67 meters per second squared. Pretty simple to do. Okay, part B says determine the total displacement of the train over that 60 seconds. So determining x, the displacement. Clearly I probably want to use my displacement equation. Displacement is initial velocity times time plus one-half acceleration times time squared. The initial velocity is 0, time of 60 seconds. The acceleration we just found is 0.67, again, 60 seconds squared. And that gives you, when you multiply everything out, around 1,200 meters total displacement for that 60 seconds. Now, part C. This is tricky because Determining things now. It says if the train now travels at a constant velocity of your 20 seconds, determine its displacement in this 20 seconds. Now it looks like that the only given we have here is a time of 20 seconds. But there's so much more. First of all, we're told constant velocity. And every time we see constant linear velocity, we know the acceleration is zero. So that's another given. The other thing is we know the initial velocity. See, the train accelerated to 40 meters per second in the first 60 seconds and now travels at a constant velocity, which means it's still traveling at 40. And in fact, that means the final velocity must also be 40 because it's a constant velocity. I want to know the displacement. So again, my displacement equation, x is vot plus 1 half at squared. Now, my initial velocity is 40 for a time of 20 seconds, but the acceleration is zero, and that means this entire part zeroes out, giving you a displacement of 800 meters. So, if you were to ask then the last question, what is the total displacement of this train at the end of 80 seconds, well, that would just be adding them up, and your total displacement after 80 seconds would be 2,000 meters, just adding them together. So there you go, a couple of examples of using kinematic equations, linear motion formulas, whatever you want to call them, to solve physics problems in motion. See you next time.